What happens to an artist when one of the very tools he uses, his hand, is changed in an instant? Jeffrey Brown visited a sculptor in New York's Hudson Valley who has had to pivot how he does his art and the art itself. The story is part of our coverage of the intersection of medicine and arts and our ongoing arts and culture series, Canvas. For John Powers, working in his studio is a process of discovery, as always. But now, as he pieced together a three-dimensional paper drawing, not as always. It was a year ago, May, that Powers faced the greatest challenge of his life. I assumed it was a double tragedy. The people around me assumed it was a double tragedy. In the For sense, like, I, I've lost my thumb and I'm an artist. And I'm an artist. Yeah. Now 51, Powers grew up in and around Chicago. Early on, he had an apprenticeship in a bronze foundry. More formal training came at the Pratt Institute and Hunter College. He became known for shaping multimedia blocks into collages and large-scale installations, works such as Lancals, a 50-foot tower of welded steel in Bruges, Belgium, Terminal, an 8-foot sphere made from polystyrene blocks, and in many configurations, a 2014 gallery exhibition called Plus Time. This way? But last uh, spring at his home in this Hudson Valley community on Oscawana oh, Lake, 90 miles north of New York City, he was using a table saw to make a piece for a fence. The saw slipped and he lost his ring finger and thumb. His index and middle fingers were very badly injured. I've grown up with people with hand injuries, yeah. but I've never seen anybody with like this configuration as you know, particularly severe and strange. His wife, Jennifer Bostick, a graphic designer, heard the scream and called for help. Even in the 911 call, I said my husband is a sculptor, he's an artist, he works with his hands. He needs a hand surgeon. After nearly a week in the hospital and the multiple surgeries that followed, nerves cut and reattached, a long period of recovery began, along with a rethinking of life, art, and his own body. You're a sculptor, you're an artist, you use your hands, right? You've yeah. always used your hands. But how much did you think about your hands? I used to joke that my feet are like dogs. They're loyal, they obey, mm -hmm. and I know they'll be there for me. Yeah. My hands are like cats. I have no idea what they do all day. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting into trouble. They're like, mm -hmm. they're doing stuff without me. Um, they're constantly exploring. So I had a sense of, of my hands as characters in my life. What I didn't have the sense of was how much they shape the way I think. Yeah, that's nice. How our hands think, especially the hands of an artist. Power says he's always approached art with what he calls a cultivated naivete, a sense of trying things without knowing where they might lead, without expectation of success. And that, he's convinced, <laughs> is helping him navigate his way now. A sense of humor helps. One of the first things he did, bury his thumb in a tiny coffin in his yard, complete with a thumbstone. Now let's get it all the way back. But the hard work of mind-body remapping with a new hand, a prosthesis, has involved trial and error and regular sessions at Handspring, a clinic for upper extremity prosthetic rehabilitation in Middletown, New York. You can't do any in-hand coordination, right? Uh, or very, very little. Deborah Latour is an occupational therapist and wears a prosthesis herself. Many times, the healthcare practitioners will talk to people about the very functional aspects, teaching them how to hold a fork and a knife and be able to cut their food, how to be able to complete their fasteners, to zip their jackets, especially if you live in somewhere cold like where we live but we oftentimes don't get to talk to people about the social function and about what they might experience, how to handle people staring at them, how to handle when people ask questions or even insist on helping us when maybe we don't want the help, we want to do a, t a particular task for ourselves. I can't even get the CAD file yet, but I'm gonna. In New York City, Powers is also no. working with Dr. Jacques yeah, Hockbord, the hand surgeon who was with Powers from the early days. Hockbord co-directs the Center for Amputation and Reconstruction at NYU Langone. 
He says the mind-body connection is a particularly delicate balance for someone who uses his hands for a living, but that Powers isn't just any patient. Having a very structural sculpting background, he understands anatomy, he understands levers and pulleys, and that's what fingers are. You know, fingers are some of the most complex sculptures that there are, um, that are functional sculptures. And so he just understands the anatomy without even knowing the anatomy. I think he kind of looks at the finger and just imagines what the, the anatomy should be and how it's working and why it's working, why it's not, and what he can do to make it better. So that's when we There's also the question of the look of this mm -hmm. new hand, the aesthetic quality. If the body is now altered, what should it look like? Or even, to put it in Powers' terms, how can it be sculpted? This, too, has captured his imagination. He's chosen a prosthesis made by a Washington State company called Naked Prosthetics, which specializes in finger and partial hand amputees, one that clearly isn't a natural hand. I was offered very realistic silicone fingers. Right. And that was really the only prosthetic I would have been offered 10 years ago. It's just thumb enough alike to be kind of creepy mm -hmm. to me. I would rather look at the hand and go through the work and live it. This is a great comfort, but it doesn't hide the hand for me. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Occupational therapist Deborah Latour. So what one person thinks is beautiful or attractive, somebody else might not. People should not be afraid to tell their practitioners what they would like included in their device. I fully expect that John will be even more personalizing his own technology as time goes on and as he becomes more functional and more adept with it and even finds himself identifying more and more with it. So in the rehab process, we may go from seeing these devices as being tools for many of us who wear and use prosthetic devices, these devices become a part of us. The aesthetics of prosthetics is a focus for Dr. Hockboard, too. What really attracts me to it is recreating function, normal function, but a new aesthetic, a different aesthetic, an appealing aesthetic, not a human aesthetic. You know, we're not trying to recreate what we already have, because we can't. Now Powers is tackling the aesthetics question in his own way. He made casts of his hands and sent digital scans to artist friends, inviting creative solutions for custom prostheses. He calls the project Open Paw, and to date he's received dozens of responses, all of which fascinate him. The idea of having these gaps in my hand and filling them with ideas. I wanted to see what my friends would do. Because I know it's, it's an interesting problem. I mean, if someone would approach me with that one, I'd, I'd have a great time. I think I would. Meanwhile, he continues to work on his own art. He's finishing this piece called Reach, a commission by one of his anesthesiologists. And he has bigger things in mind. The idea is to have this be a proposal model for a, a ludicrously large sculpture. So uh, imagine the, this piece will be eventually nine feet tall. Your flowering ones look great. Ambitions for a new art with a new hand, including a return to woodwork in the near future. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in the Hudson Valley, New York. Fascinating and so inspiring to all of us who are watching that. And on the NewsHour online, cities across Missouri are cutting back on 911 service, turning over their services to other government entities, or cutting back on staff, which reflects a growing trend across the country. You can read how some of these cities are making do. That's at pbs.org newshour.